The government is considering whether to change the legal definition of employee as a way to better protect vulnerable contractors. Workplace Minister Michael Wood is with me. And Minister, where are you at with the recommendations that came out of the Tripartite Working Group on Better Protections for Contractors? Now this came out late last year. Uh, Where are things at now? Yes, we received the joint recommendations from the tripartite group, which had the CTU, Business New Zealand and government officials working through this problem at the table together. They presented us with joint recommendations on how they thought we should take this question forward. They identified some what they believe are some weaknesses in the current framework that mean that we do have a number of employees who are misclassified as contractors. And they've effectively recommended that we have a much clearer legal definition that really goes to the heart of the the issue as to whether someone is in business for themselves or genuinely is an employee. It's It's a significant area of policy. So we've spent the last nine months or so engaged in significant policy work in this area. And it's my expectation that relatively soon the government will be able to move forward and present some proposals for reform for formal public consultation. Where do you see that definition landing? Uh, Well, as I say, we'll we'll have to take the proposal forward, consult on it, and then consider what we hear back. But if we look to what the tripartite group have said, they've effectively said that there's a considerable grey zone in the law at the moment between um, worker, employee, and contractor status, that there are a group of people who, in particular, are relatively vulnerable uh, in this area and that in many cases those people are misclassified as a result of that to their detriment. Uh, So what the working group recommended were nine key principles to test out the definition between contractor and employee with a very, very objective test, and that that should be embedded in statute. So that that, that is the working proposal that we have on the table from the tripartite working group. I feel that it was very well worked through. There had been considerable work that went into that proposal. And as I say, it was focused on looking through what might sort of be presentational arrangements and saying, we really need to test the real nature of the relationship. And that's what those tests are based around. So that's what we have in front of us. And that's what we're working on at the moment. But of course, the report itself concedes that this uh, contractor model is embedded pretty much in quite a few industries now, you know, courier drivers, uh, residential construction and so forth. And it says that that the model would basically have to change for those industries, which is something that, you know, they've used for a long time now. Do Do you believe that that is correct, that that is what will have to happen? Well, it's a little too soon to say exactly what would happen. We still have to come forward with formal proposals uh, and then determine what they will be. But what I would say is that if we do have sectors where it has become embedded, that people are being classified as contractors when really they are not in business for themselves, when really they have very little control over their day-to-day activities, when really all of the rules are set by someone above them, then you have to question whether that is a legitimate model and whether that is uh, is consistent with what most of us consider an employee or a cr- contractor to be. So we have to make sure that the law is right, that it is getting to the heart of the relationship and that it is treating people in a fair way. We will, of course, consider as a part of this that if there are changes that result, how that can be done as smoothly as possible, uh, and that will include consideration of what transition arrangements there should be. Everyone seems to agree that a third category of workers is not desirable. But, you know, a lot of people in the industry are arguing, well, you could set a base base level of protections, such as, you know, transparent contracts and, you know, the opportunity to get advice and an independent uh, dispute resolution service. How do you feel about those suggestions? I think those are all potentially useful suggestions to be explored. But we uh, have taken our approach from the tripartite working group here and they very clearly in examining this set of problems and issues said to us that the the key area in which we can make improvements is in establishing much greater clarity in the boundary line between employment and contracting. And that in fact, if we get that right, then we will minimise the degree to which there are problems in contracting arrangements that need those other mitigations. So while that could be some further work that we move on to, we're taking our taking our, our, our guidance from the tripartite working group, I think, looked at this very thoroughly.
I mean, they are arguing, though, that you could do this without changing uh, the employment relationship, that, you know, they, they, you could just make it make fairer contracts rather than making everybody employees. You're obviously not considering going down that route. Well, as I say, those might well be things that we, we do look at. Um, but the, the initial call from the tripartite group, which, again, you know, had both Business New Zealand and the CTU at the table, was to get the legal boundary line correct in the first instance. And I'll note a couple of things around this. One is that deals with the fundamental issue that's in front of us. And the tripartite working group identified a fundamental imbalance of power sometimes when vulnerable groups of workers are put in those contracting situations when they should most appropriately uh, be employees. Secondly, the courts themselves are beginning to take more interest in this area. And in my view, if there is not really good legal clarity and good legal tests provided, that actually potentially creates greater uncertainty and greater risks for all concerned. A couple of points there. Uh, you know, um, you talk about the power imbalance and, 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 you know, obviously there are people that are being exploited and low pay and it's not a very productive situation. But then there are operators that are very productive, like, you know, Freightways. Some of their operators are earning sort of $40, $50, $60 an hour. And uh, Freightways says, well, if we make them all employees, they'll be on $25 an hour and they'll just leave. What do you say to that? Uh, well, firstly, we've got to develop the proposals up. And uh, the intention of them is not to reclassify everyone who is currently a contractor uh, to being an employee. The intention of the proposals uh, is effectively neutral in respect of um, uh, what should happen to individual companies or individual people. It's about saying, let's have a clear and objective legal test here that is based on the real nature of the work. And if someone is genuinely acting as a contractor, genuinely has agency and control over what, what they're doing, then fine. Um, the government has no particular desire, nor does the tripartite working group, to reclassify those people as employees. But if you've got vulnerable people who in reality have no control or agency over what they're doing, all the rules get set by the employer, um, particularly when those people might have limited ability to engage in contracting arrangements, might be earning very low, have very low overall earnings. In reality, most people can look at those situations and say that it's farcical that those people are considered contractors. So we are trying to hone in on the problem. We don't want to cast the net overly broadly and bring in people who are genuinely contractors. One of the things Freightways is arguing is that you could have a sustainability index, and, and in fact they use one to work out whether their runs are you know, economically viable for the operator, and that you could have a system of mandatory sustainability indexes across these kinds of industries. What do you think of that? Oh, look, I think that there are potentially some very good tools, such as those ones that uh, Freightways have identified, uh, that can bring much more fairness into contracting arrangements. And I do encourage firms who do have contracting arrangements to look at those sorts of tools uh, to make sure that earnings are fair and appropriate, to make sure that there is a, a worker voice in the relationship. Uh, but I suppose, in part, I would say, by nature, those voluntary sorts of arrangements and tools will be picked up by the best companies, uh, but the low riders will, by definition, generally not pick up on them. And that is why we think it is important uh, that there is a fair, appropriate, legally objective test to determine who is a contractor and who is an employee. Freightways Chief Executive Mark Troffier has said that he feels like he's battling an ideological government that doesn't understand what life's like at the coalface. How would you answer that? Well, as I've just explained, all we're trying to do here, based on a joint Business New Zealand CTU recommendation, is to have a clear and objective legal test. Uh, to really test as to whether someone is in business by themselves, which is what we consider a contractor to be, or whether someone should be an employee. And if we're talking about the real world here, I just encourage people who are, you know, maybe have those views about this particular issue uh, to talk to some of the people who are caught on the other side of this problem. Some of the very vulnerable, extremely low paid workers who sometimes end up earning um, a net less than the minimum wage because of contracting arrangements which fundamentally exploit them. So there is a balance to be struck here, and we want to make sure that all of those interests are considered and that the regime is appropriately targeted. And where does all this work fit with the other work the government's doing, such as fair pay agreements and um, social unemployment insurance? It, it's a very important piece of work in the workplace relations and safety uh, work programme. Fair pay agreements will be concluding their process through the parliament over the next uh, month or so. 
And for me, this piece of reform work is one of the critical ones that we then have going forward. It is one of my top priorities. It is something that we clearly signalled in our election manifesto. The work began, in fact, back in 2019 when there was a substantial public consultation on the set of issues. We've now had the tripartite process and we do think it's time now to move forward and provide some certainty. Workplace Minister Michael Wood, thanks for joining us. Thank you.